What's up everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna go through managing refurbishments. How to choose builders, how to choose your refurb team, and how to know who's the best people to actually work with in terms of doing up and renovating your project or your house. And how to do it in the most cost efficient way because that's probably the most crucial thing, making sure the project is cost efficient, cost effective refurb, that's what I'm all about. So guys, if you've not already, please like and subscribe let's get straight into it. So I don't know about you, but when you're doing your first project, your first renovation project, so you have a house and you want to renovate it and make it go from something that's pretty rundown, old looking, to making it brand new and look amazing. I don't know about you guys, but on my first project, I massively underestimated the numbers because when you're starting out, you think, yeah, you can do things for, say, I can do this whole house for, say, £6,000. I'm just going to go with the cheapest builders and just get everything done. I'll just micromanage the hell out of the builders and I'll get it done for 6,000 pounds. Yeah, all I need is some paint, you know, I just need to do the whole of the house, but I'll do it for cheap. That's what I thought. But you know what, I was so wrong. When you've never done a project before, you think things are not gonna cost as much as they actually do. So you think things might cost say 10,000 pounds for the whole project. And then you realize the project's gonna cost you probably double maybe more so the reality of it is when you're starting out if you've never done a re refurbishment project the figures in your head are probably going to be wrong they're probably going to be much lower than the reality so what i always say to people is when you're costing up and pricing up a refurb project you need to be thinking an average case scenario you know don't always think best case scenario because a lot of the time you might have a really cheap builder or joiner or plaster or something like that but you know what they might be busy so you need to think about that I base things off the normal rate, which is for a builder. In Nottingham, where I live, it's about £150 on a day rate. Um, more advanced guys, you're looking at £180 um, on a day rate. So I kind of cost in my head what I'm looking to pay. And then what I'll actually do is, I'll actually get three different quotes from three different individual trades. For example, right now I don't have to do that because I know who to go to, I know who will give me a great price. But when you're starting out, my biggest tip for anyone in terms of choosing the right people is to go and get three different quotes from three different people. So for example, for your electric work, you need, say, you need spotlights putting in the bathroom, the kitchen, you need sockets, double sockets adding into every room, and you need all the light switches changing and all the fixtures changing. And you also need the electric certificate. So say for example, you need all that doing from your electrician. What you need to do is go and find three different electricians and get a price from each of them. Okay, so you've got your three different quotes. One of them's came in at 2,000 pounds, one of them's came in at 1,500, and one of them's came in at 3,000 pounds. Now, of course, you would think, go with the cheapest quote, but you do need to weigh it up. So you need to decide, right, how trustworthy is this person? Has this person came recommended by anybody? Has this person been doing it for a long time or are they just a really young, young person? Bear this in mind, have you seen this person's work? I mean, with your electrician, I definitely get someone that's been recommended to you. So you know a developer, you know somebody that does up properties or that works with different tradespeople, maybe a really good builder, friend, family member that you know that has a good electrician I'd say go with them because that way someone's basically saying yeah he's a good one so get a quote off him at the same time you don't want to be paying top whack you don't really want to be paying the highest one so if I was you I would look at the different variables now the different variables are price trust and pay method so firstly obviously the price we spoke about that it's not necessarily best to go for the cheapest quote but you do want to go for the lower end of the quotes but just make sure the person is trustworthy so you've had them recommended. Then also you have the trust aspect of it. So as I said, are they recommended? Do you know anyone that they've worked for? Can you go and get a testimonial from someone that they've done work with? And can they show you your, their work? So usually a lot of the time when you go and meet them to get the quote, they'll pull out the phone and say, look, we just did this and they'll start showing you on the iPhone um, or Android. So yeah, trust. And then we have payment method. So this one is their terms. Do they want money up front? If they do, that's a bit of a red flag. Definitely would never, ever advise that. I personally like to do stage payments. So for example, with the electrician, they'll come and do the first fix. I'll pay them for the first fix. Their second fix, I'll pay them for the second fix. And then when they've completed the whole project, they've got the electric certificate that's been handed back to me. 
and everything's done and I've tested it all and we've you know tested it out quite a few times then yes at that point then I will pay the remaining balance so I like to pay in different stages I know so many people a close friend of mine um, actually got a kitchen and the builder just ran off with the money so they never got to get the kitchen um, and that happens so much there's a lot of dodgy builders and a lot of uh, dodgy tradespeople. when I say tradespeople, I just mean like electrician plasterer builder plumber so just look out for that but one thing I was saying is never pay up front so just keep that in mind guys you want to do stage payments and you can't really go wrong with stage payments um, because if they're not doing any work then they're not going to get paid now some of them might ask for some materials but you will find that materials wise is not going to cost much the main thing you're paying is the labor the labor time um, would i advise doing people on a day rate no i'd advise you get a quote for the whole job because that way they're not going to be taking the they're not going to be taking the and just literally spending too long to do the, what they need to do say for example you go with this quote for two thousand pounds the price is okay you're happy with them you feel like you can trust them and they're happy to do stage payments. For example, if they was on a day rate, they might make that price more like 3,000 by delaying it and saying, oh, I need to come back tomorrow, I need to do this. So stage payments is how I like to do it. And I like to get a quote for the whole job. I don't wanna do a day rate, I wanna do a quote for the whole job. I've learned that and I'm still learning that. Sometimes you think, yeah, we'll save money doing a day rate, but you know what, you don't. I think you should get quotes for each individual job. That way you will save the most money, I believe, because you know exactly how much you're paying. And if they don't do the job, then you do not pay them. Don't let anyone, any builder or any trade person try and bully you, pressure you into paying before they've done the work. You need to put your foot down, say to them, I'm not paying until it's done. Simple. A lot of them will try and get all friendly, friendly with you. Don't get me wrong, some of them are great guys or girls you know some of them are really nice people but i've just found in my experience to keep it professional and just say listen when it's done then i'll pay because they will well not all of them but a lot of them will try and take the out of you so yeah and a lot of people say managing trained people is like managing kids in a school that's a bit harsh but i understand why people may say that because it is hard work at times when they are trying to take the piss so um yeah these are the three main aspects and as i said don't necessarily go for the cheapest quote one thing that people ask me is how do you keep a track on spending how do you know how much you're spending now one thing that is really really helpful well there's two things actually the first thing is there's an app on your iphone called notes i recommend that from day one so as soon as you pay any money to do with that property so for example at the early stages when you're paying for even a mortgage broker fee of a few hundred pounds, uh, a valuation fee of say 400 or 500 pounds, your solicitor fees, any single payment you make to do with this property purchase, I want you to basically note down everything. So on the notes app, you've got spent so far, and then you just literally list every single thing that you have spent down to the T. So even if it's 30 pound for a TV bracket, I want you to put it on there. And this will let you know exactly how much your refurb cost was and exactly how much you've spent. Now, people use spreadsheets and that type of thing. Me personally, I get very confused by spreadsheets, so I've never used them. I like to use my notes on my phone. If I'm working with a JV partner, then what I'll actually do is whenever new things have been added on, what I'll do is I'll just forward them and share this note with them. It's very easy to do, you just do it as a text message or a WhatsApp. Whenever they're querying or questioning how much have we spent, they can just go on WhatsApp, they've always got an update, boom, 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 this is what we've spent. Some people don't want up updates all the time, but this is more if you're working with a JV partner. But if you're doing it on your own or with a JV partner, this is a great tool that you can use, notes on your iPhone, very simple, very effective. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you right now is actually an account that I've just set up. So I've just set up this business bank account through the Starling app. Now this is a JV, so, so this is a property that myself and my JV partner are purchasing together. He's funding the project and basically we've set up this bank account. So this is it and this is the Starling app. As you can see, right here, 
we have 2465 in the account now once we start spending stuff because obviously this is um we've not put the deposit in just yet but once we start spending stuff you can actually see what you've spent and it's very clear I actually told you what you've spent. So you've got the homepage, you can um, add people onto it pretty easily. You have a card attached to it as well. So the main thing that I like about Starling Bank is the fact that you're able to write down what category the payment was in. So if it was for marketing, if it was for admin, if it was for repairs and maintenance, if it was for refurbishments, you can basically, when you're paying any builder, you can just select refurbishments. So when your accountant looks at your business bank account here, can actually see exactly what you've spent. So it's really, really, really helpful. It just saves a lot of admin time and it's a lot easier for your accountant to just say, okay, right, 500 pounds was paid to say Jay Smithy. Instead of asking you who's Jay Smithy, he can just see under the category refurbishment and it says for the reference builder. So it's very helpful. Definitely something I've utilized in and it's making my life a whole lot easier. Okay, so another thing I do is when it comes to material, I really, really struggled at the start because I think before I was working with this plasterer, this, this other guy, and he knew it was my first project. So I think he tried to charge about 50 pound per bag for plaster. <laughs> when I look back, I do think that is a joke because plaster is only about 11 pounds or like nine, 10 pounds for plaster, for a bag of plaster. Obviously, if you wanna make the wall smooth, you need to buy a plaster, skimming, bonding, stuff like that. These are things what are very cheap. So I'd recommend for things like that, say to the plasterer, right, I want you to buy the materials and save a receipt. So say if he's charged, I don't know, 2,000 pounds for the whole job, you say, right, does that include materials? He's probably gonna say no. He probably says he'll charge that on top. So say for example, the plasterer has given you a quote for 2,000 pounds, but he said that's not including materials. So all you have to do is say to him, I want you to go and buy the materials and save the receipt. And then all you do is you basically just check the receipt and just see how much he's paid and add that onto the bill. That's fine. Most people will go to Selco and places like that for materials. So that's probably one of the best places I recommend Selco. It's quick, it's easy to do, you can do it online. Other option you can do with materials is you can order things online from either Howden's, Selco, they're the two places I go. So for things like doors, skirting boards, door frames, kitchen doors, anything you need like handles or things like that, Howden's are really good because they have some really nice products in there. For example, with the kitchens, they have some lovely kitchens. Obviously, you can negotiate with Howden's as well. Now, a lot of people don't do this. So they'll go in, Howden's will say, right, £7,000. But what you can do is you can say, listen, this is the price I had in mind. This is how much I've got my kitchens for in the past. I really need you to do me some sort of discount here because if not, I'm just going to go to somewhere else. Usually, they'll say, all right, fine, fine, fine. We'll, we'll knock some money off. And yeah, you can definitely negotiate with Howden's. But it's worth getting an account with Howden's so you can buy things like your doors, your handles, or architrave for the doors as well. So all this stuff you can get from Howden's and they're a really good price and they just look great as well. Selco, they are good for a lot of things like plasterboard, plaster, just more general materials that you'll need. Selco is great for that and it's nice and easy and quick, as I said. Howden's is a bit long to set it up, but once it's set up, it's all worth it. So yeah, Howden's and Selco, they're the two places that I do source my materials from. And you can do click and collect as well, or you can do delivery. So say for example, you're working with a builder. I personally like the builders to just go and sort out all the stuff. I'll just check the receipt and just pay the material cost as well. So yeah, that's how I do it guys. Or if they're saying, oh, I don't wanna get slowed up. Can you please help me out? Can you order some stuff? I'll just do it because I like things to be smooth and I want my guys to be motivated. I want my builders to be motivated all the time rather than just messing about trying to get materials. So disclaimer guys, I'm no, by no means an expert. I've done five projects. I've been in property for three and a half, coming on four years now. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'll say I'm not new to the game, but I've only been doing this for three and a half, four years. So yeah, this is how I do it. I'm still improving myself. There's a lot of things construction wise that I need to work on and I need to get better at. For example, finding the right team, getting the right team together. Sometimes I have a great team, but they're quite busy. So I'm still working on getting enough projects where my guys, my team will just always be on just my projects and I can just pull them from one project to the other. But yeah, I'm still working on stuff myself. So that's materials, guys. Okay, so next we have 
time scale? How long is your project going to take? What should you expect? And how do you understand how, how long this thing will take? Now guys, again, time scale. When it comes to your first project, you might be using a mortgage and thinking, right, I'll get the house in a month. That's what I thought. I thought, right, I, I know it can take long, but I'm going to do this in a month and a half. And you think, yeah, I can get the keys very quickly. Now, yeah, it is possible to use a mortgage and get keys for the house in less than a month. It is possible. It's extremely difficult though, and I think that is best, best, best case scenario. Usually, to buy a property, you're looking around three months. So, time scale to actually get the keys, you're looking around three months. If it takes four months, I believe that's normal. And in COVID-19, things are taking five months to actually do using a mortgage. Things are taking a lot longer. And the agents are aware of that, but it's best to just reiterate that to the agent and say, listen, things are taking longer due to the coronavirus. But time scale, mortgage takes long. So just get ready for that. Be patient, get all your paperwork in as soon as you can. And all these admin bits, just stay on top of it. And that should hopefully speed it up. So it's less than four months. So yeah, that's one thing that did surprise me on my first one. It just took so long to get the keys. Um, but yeah, it's part of the game. Time scale in terms of the refurb. Now, usually a usual refurb, a basic, project refurb is usually going to take you around three months to do if you're on top of it and you have good builders and a good team depending on the size of the project and what needs doing but let's say there was no structural changes so you didn't need any layout changes you needed to rip out the whole property put a new kitchen in new bathrooms you didn't need to add in any stud walls or change the layout i think for that type of project if it's a relatively normal sized house say um, a mid terrace or an end terrace or a semi-detached house Depending on the size, I believe you're looking around three months to from start to finish. So this is what I recommend you do. As soon as you get the keys for the property, you already have people lined up to work. This will save you a lot of time if you have people ready to start. Now, if your builders are busy guys, and if they're good builders, then they probably are gonna be busy. So you need to schedule it in and just let them know, listen, I'm getting the keys on the 1st of December or something like that, just as an example. And that will allow them to make sure that they have some time available in December to crack on with your project. So just keep them in the loop, give them lots of advance notice. If it's gonna take another week, just say two weeks prior, just let them know, say, guys, listen, I'm so sorry, it's taking a bit longer. It's now gonna be the 15th of December. So just keep them in the loop, let them know what's happening. And that way, hopefully they'll be free and they'll be able to crack on and rip out everything in the project. And then you can literally get or you have a team in. So the order I'd like to do things in, first the rip out, so get someone in there to basically strip out the whole property. And, then, and again, get free quotes from three different laborers and find out who can do it for the cheapest price. That knows what they're doing. And again, we look at the different things, um, the price, the trust, and the payment method. Those are the three things that you need to keep in mind um, when you're choosing who you want to do the job. So yeah, the first thing to rip out, Obviously get the kitchen um, kitchen guy out as soon as you can to make the plans so there's no delays there. Same with the bathroom. And yeah, just get the ball rolling from there. I think on my next project, what I'm actually gonna do to kind of make things a bit more understandable for anyone watching that might be wanting to do projects themselves, is I'm gonna showcase from start to finish each exact step, more like a TV show, but basically we're gonna show every single step from start to finish and you might be able to do your project alongside my project so you can just cross reference. So that might be quite good, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so a subscriber's asked me, how do you choose the flooring, the carpets, and the furniture? In short, this is how I do it. I have an interior designer. Um, so my interior designer basically picks everything from the colors. She will let me know, for example, she'll, she'll send me a photo of a few different examples of carpets. But she knows what I like. Usually want to go with a dark gray carpet, so it's cost effective. You know, you can get a really good price, uh, dark gray carpet, and they don't get dirty. So for me, in most of the HMO deals that I do, the properties I do, uh, usually shared houses, HMOs. So I put in dark gray carpets throughout. But then we've recently started putting in nice flooring in the living areas and the kitchen areas. So with that, how do I choose it? First I look at, do I want to do vinyl, laminate? Depending on your budget, laminate is a bit more expensive, but laminate can be very nice and look very aesthetically pleasing. Also, another thing you can do, if you want to do an exposed, exposed brick tile wall, 
then you can buy tiles and you just get a tiler to put them on the wall and they look really good so that's a little tip for you guys if you want it to look really good and i think the website you can get them from is is tiles uk just type in tiles uk on google and you'll find them but yeah just a little tip for you guys but yeah in terms of how do i pick the flooring and the furniture i do rely on my interior designer for the ideas and i just got go out there and source the best price flooring and that just looks exactly like what she sent me so it's bonus question time guys now this was a comment that came in on the youtube on one of my last videos and it was from just a daft punk so shout out to you just a daft punk appreciate you for commenting on the video if you guys want a question answered then just literally put it in the comments below don't be shy don't be scared just go ahead and put a comment right here but yeah just a daft punk he's asked do you think you could have grown your pot quicker through deal selling or is that a myth? My goal is to grow through the Burr portfolio, but obviously I'm stuck with the same issue everyone else has, no money. Guys, first I just wanna say, don't get disheartened. It is possible, you can raise up finance and you can save up money and you can start buying properties. So don't think that it's impossible. This is something very achievable, guys. So yeah, stay focused, stay positive, but do I think that deal selling can increase your pot quicker? So you can then use that money to do the burr method 100 yeah i do but i just think people try and get into deal selling without understanding what a deal actually is if you don't know what something is you don't understand something how the hell can you sell it so i'd say for people that want to get into deal selling and deal sourcing i think you need to know how to find a good deal understand what a deal is and then just start viewing oh, hundreds of properties you need to do that if you do want to really get a idea of what actually a good property deal is so yeah learn how to do that and then yeah definitely deal sourcing could be a great way to build some capital a few tips what i don't hear many people say is try and make friends with developers because if you make good friends with a developer you can then even if you just had a coaching call with a certain developer or a mentorship call with someone that's doing real life refurbs and developments they will be actively buying houses so that's a link for you that's someone you can add into your investor database. You can just say to them, hi, do you mind if um, I send you over this deal that I've been looking at? I'd be happy to pass it on for a sourcing fee. And then send it to them um, if it's in their location. For example, anyone that's got any deals in Nottingham, I might buy them, you know? Someone's found me from YouTube and actually sold me one of their deals for 5,000 pounds. So it's definitely achievable, guys. So keep that in mind. Do I think it will help you grow your pot? Yes. Is it gonna be difficult? Yes, can you do it? Yes. That's me checking out. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all soon.